So very good afternoon to all the panelists and participants who has joined. A uh, very warm welcome to Mr. Rajesh Meena, who's one of the keynote speakers for the day, and uh, Dr. Kohli and Rao, who's uh, going to be the moderator for the session. Uh, for the information of all the participants, this is the second episode of Agri FinTech series uh, that we started in April. The first episode was on uh, digital lending, uh, and the second episode, the focus is on digitizing crop insurance. And we are extremely thankful to a partner, CropIn, uh, the entire team, Krishna, Kunal, Jyoti, and Bro, who have worked very hard with us in putting together this episode. So many thanks to the CropIn team. Uh, so of course, if you look at today's topic, uh, uh, you know, we all know that uh, digitization of the whole uh, crop insurance and agri-insurance in general is the need of the hour. And the technology and the new age innovation that we see has a key role to play, whether it's uh, improving the efficiency and the penetration of Pradhan Mantri Pasal Bhima Yojana, or, or whether it's uh, coming up with a new products uh, related to um, uh, parametric insurance or micro insurance or weather related insurance. I think that all is possible with the kind of tools that we have on hand, the kind of data that we get uh, at the farm level, at the hyper local level, using satellite imagery, drones, uh, weather stations, uh, sensors, IoT devices. I think that all is very helpful in building this uh, 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 innovation ecosystem, which probably wasn't there uh, maybe a decade ago. So we believe that uh, we have a lot of uh, innovations in the, in the ecosystem. What we need to uh, do more is essentially bringing various partners together, uh, which is reinsurance companies, insurance companies, startups, and policymakers. And that's essentially the idea uh, behind convening uh, this uh, uh, ACT clinic today to get all the stakeholders together and, uh, you know, and discuss some of the opportunities that we have on designing new products, on how to distribute these insurance products to smallholder farmers. Uh, you know, if you look at the urban insurance market, we have seen likes of Policy Bazaar, Echo, Digit, Discovery, so many in, uh, startups who have come to cater to the needs of the uh, uh, market in urban uh, areas. But unfortunately, in rural markets, we still don't see, uh, you know, too many startups. So the whole idea is to deepen the startup ecosystem in the agri-insurance space. And you know that's where we continue to work um, with all of you uh, to build that uh, uh, ecosystem. With that, uh, I'll, I'll pause and I'll introduce, uh, uh, I'll introduce Mr. Rajesh Meena, who's one of the keynote speakers. Uh, Dr. Bhutani will join in sometime. Maybe we can get started with, uh, with uh, Mr. Meena. And I'll just uh, give a brief introduction uh, of him. Uh, Mr. Meena is uh, Registrar Cooperative Society's uh, Cooperative Department at Government of Bihar. He's a native of Jaipur, Rajasthan, and was a part of the batch of IES in the year 2012 cadre. Uh, he graduated from uh, esteemed engineering college, NIT Allahabad, with a degree in BTEC. He has previously worked as SDM for Madhubani, uh, then as DDC in West Champaran. Uh, Mr. Meena, also has been the MD of Bihar Rajya Jal Parishad and has played a pivotal role in the city of Munger as a district magistrate. So welcome, uh, Mr. Meena, and uh, we look forward to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much, Himindraji. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my heartiest greetings to all the panelists as well as uh, all the listeners here. Uh, as uh, uh, Himindri ji has introduced, um, I am a 2012 batch IS officer and I have uh, been working in different capacities uh, throughout the state of Bihar. Uh, I joined this uh, cooperative department a uh, few months ago, uh, last year itself. Uh, then uh, I'm looking after various schemes that are being implemented with this department. So when we uh, talk about this agri-finance and uh, crop insurance business, uh, uh, I will share my experience of uh, what I have seen in Bihar because uh, there's a flagship scheme, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana, which different states are uh, uh, using this scheme. But uh, there are very few states like Bihar who have uh, 
who are uh, using different kind of uh, schemes in their own state uh, we had uh, pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana for few years from 2015 to 2017 but uh, there were some issues with that uh, so ultimately we moved on from that scheme because of maybe peculiarities of bihar state so when we do any kind some kind of schemes like insurance scheme particularly when the small farmers are uh, involved we need to look at the peculiarities or uh, uh, such kind of things uh, which are prevalent in that particular state so in our state of bihar uh, uh, there were various uh, issues with the uh, uh, this pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana because there are many uh, panelists among here uh, different company uh, persons are here very high highly placed officers are here so i would like to mention those things that uh, the amount of premium that uh, we were giving the state of bihar was giving the central government was uh, paying and then the farmers were also paying and what we were getting in and compensation to that it was not maybe commensurate so that was one point around 721 crores were distributed to 3.29 lakh farmers whereas the total amount of premium was 1199 crores so the equations are very different you are all experts in this field but uh, when the small farmers don't get uh, adequate you know compensation or when their compensation is delayed uh, by significant amount of time then it basically defeats the purpose of any scheme so we have um, a large number of farmers in bihar and when we switch to a, to the different scheme the our uh, coverage of this scheme has improved uh, significantly now we are uh, paying more than 4 lakh farmers 4.5 lakh farmers about 400 500 crores in compensation so we uh, right now we have this uh, uh, bihar rajya fasal sahayata yojana bihar state crop assistance scheme in place of pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana so this uh, basically the same uh, same scheme with a different uh, uh, design and also bihar there is one peculiarity that we have small land holdings there is a large number of farmers and the land holding of uh, farmers in bihar is very small and uh, uh, we have large number of share coppers and then these share coppers were not being able to get uh, proper advantage in the uh, insurance scheme so there were uh, many such kind of things which forced state of bihar to uh, look for some alternative scheme maybe uh, we wanted to develop a tailor made scheme particularly to suit for the demands for the needs for uh, of this state so we moved to this bihar state uh, crop assistance scheme uh, in, and when we talk about this scheme it is a completely uh, technological driven scheme end to end we use uh, techni uh, technology there there is no uh, uh, person to person contact the farmers have to apply uh, online on, on, on online portal then different uh, parts of the scheme they are all uh, they are uh, done uh, technologically the salient features of this scheme is that uh, there is a crop yield calculation is, uh, takes place based on the crop cutting experiments and then uh, there is an indemnity level about 70% and based on this indemnity level and crop yields uh, we calculate the damage uh, to the farm, to the crops or the uh, whatever the production it is so if the damage or the production is less than uh, 20% so the compensation paid is 7500 rupees per hectare Uh, for a maximum of two hectares, and if the damage or loss of uh, loss in the production is more than thirty uh, percent, then the compensation amount is rupees ten thousand per hectare, for a maximum of about two hectare, which be, uh, which becomes about twenty thousand rupees. So this is the overall uh, scenario. But uh, uh, when we talk about uh, the implementation process, it is as I told you, it is a dig uh, completely digital. There are different uh, steps into this scheme, like uh, registration. of the farmers it is uh, online it is done online through a web portal then there is field inspection of the applications this is also done online through a, a web based application then validation of data takes place and if there are any a problem in the data if there is uh, some error then red flags are uh, generated and then we try to sanitize that data the removal of errors take place and a final list of beneficiaries is uh, is drawn and then the online advice is generated we pay uh, or through direct benefit transfer scheme and then this payment is aadhar enabled payment so this is completely uh, the farmers don't have to go to offices farmers don't have to uh, talk to any particular department officers this is a completely web based portal based system and uh, uh, there is a timeline for all uh, for both the schemes be it a kharif season or be it rabi season there is a timeline for this scheme and we follow that timeline for different aspects as i already told you 
be it registration, be it uh, field verification, be it validation, or be it payment. We follow a timeline uh, for both the crops, Rabi crop as well as Kharif crop. And in this way, we uh, try our best to give the benefit of schemes to the farmer uh, in, a, uh, in a proper time. Uh, while getting the registration or uh, applications, we uh, try to take uh, the other details, land possession certificates, and bank details, self declarations from the farmer so that uh, the data is uh, as good as possible. So this is uh, basically about the scheme that we have in our state uh, in lieu of uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. And this scheme got a special recognition by the government of India also. We won e-governance award from government of India for this uh, scheme. And many other states have also uh, queried to us. They have also been in touch with us uh, for the detailing of this scheme. So uh, what I want to suggest is that uh, basically this insurance schemes are very important that the need of that the demand uh, is there so we have to have need based insurance schemes for the farmers in which uh, all the stakeholders should be taken care of the delays in the uh, payment of uh, farmers should be minimized there may be uh, different constraints uh, from the insurance companies but ultimately the farmers are the beneficiaries uh, frame in our mind both government of India as well as all the state governments, they are working for this. Uh, different states, as I've already told you, they may have a different kind of uniqueness features. So uh, they, there may be a need to change the schemes accordingly. But ultimately, the purpose is to uh, help the farmers. This also helps in financial inclusion and the farmers' prosperity. So we are all working in this direction. My sincere request to all the uh, companies is that we should uh, look at this this uh, at this angle and then uh, the um, more and more digitization we can do the best use of technology uh, we can use this can in, uh, include uh, transparency in our system efficiency in the system as well as speed it can speed up the process so this was uh, my inputs uh, i would like to hear from uh, you all so that uh, because there's so much learning into this i would like to hand over to himendraji and uh, we can li like to hear from you thank you so much Thank you, Mr. Meena, a very good perspective and a comprehensive perspective uh, from the state of Bihar. And uh, clearly, digitization has a huge role to play in driving the financial inclusion. And clearly, insurance is, is one of those ways. And I'm sure all the players who are participating in this uh, at clinic have a lot to contribute. Uh, so with that, maybe we can move to the panel discussion uh, as we still uh, await uh, Dr. Bhutani to come. And let me uh, start with uh, introducing the moderator for the panel, uh, Mr. Kohli and Rao. Uh, Mr. Rao is specializing in general insurance for over 34 years, out of which almost uh, 32 years were in agriculture insurance. He worked in various capacities with General Insurance Corporation of India and Agricultural Insurance Company of India, both at operational level and corporate level. Uh, Mr. Rao is a doctorate in agricultural economics with thesis on parametric insurance. And currently he's working with uh, IRICDS as a senior advisor. Uh, Mr. Mr., uh, Mr. Rao, uh, over to you uh, to introduce other panelists and uh, moderate the discussion. Thank you so much, uh, Hemandra, for your generous uh, introduction. So, you know, uh, the the prime minister uh, uh, the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana you know the, the flagship uh, insurance scheme of the government of india um, as we know it's evolved over uh, 40 years the first yield index based insurance product as a pilot started in 1979 and 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 uh, that pilot uh, got converted into a comprehensive crop insurance scheme in 1985 National Agriculture Insurance Scheme in, in uh, 1999. Then we had a few more variants in between. And finally, uh, of course, we also had modified National Agriculture Insurance Scheme. We had NCIP, National Crop Insurance Program. Then finally, uh, in 2016, we had the, the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. Um, have been associated with crop insurance uh, uh, since 1987, uh, from the days of you know, the CCIS. Um, so I, I'm pretty much passionate about these index insurance products, and and I'm 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 uh, I'm proud of you know the product we have in India. I, I, 
fortunately I had the opportunity of uh, visiting country and studying uh, the crop insurance products which are being administered in, in different countries. Uh, but given the background we have, given the, given the context, the Indian context where we have a large number of small size farm holdings and, and probably we didn't have the, the uh, yield data at the individual farm level. Um, uh, and, and there are various other uh, uh, complexities. So probably the index insurance probably is the best uh, 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 bet for us. And, and that's how we started. And uh, the credit for you know, introducing the index insurance in India, of course, goes to uh, Professor William Dandaker, who was considered the father of crop insurance in India. I had to take his name because um, um, I had a few interactions with him when he was there and, and, and the enlightened personality who played an important role. So talking about the PMF, boy, it's, a, it's a, 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 in a way world's largest uh, crop insurance program. Uh, although we call it an index insurance primarily, but if you look at uh, the various features, you can see uh, it, it works as an index insurance for widespread calamities and works as an indemnity insurance for localized calamities. So it's a, it's a unique, unique combination of index plus insurance where where depending upon the requirement, it, it works as an index as well as an indemnity insurance. And I don't, I didn't come across any other product uh, which is which is in terms of the of the the scope or the features uh, so varied and 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 so comprehensive that meets requirements of most farms. And and also PMABO is also unique in the sense that it's a it's a multi stakeholder. Uh, typically in insurance, we have insurance company, uh, the insured party, and uh, and uh, if there is a subsidy, there's a government and, and reinsurance. But here is a program, you know, uh, which is which has been designed to be multi-agency from the beginning in 1979, 1985, that the strengths of the existing machinery, existing government setup could be made use of for 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 you know kind of uh, um, uh, easy and uh, and uh, uh, cost saving method of distributing the product and getting the you know the claims uh, uh, claims amount distributed so we have the state government playing very important role different departments in the state government and uh, most importantly the banking institutions is being linked to the credit the banking institutions play a very important role um, um, now uh, probably uh, since a pmf uh, pmf way we're talking about the cse and other modes of enrollment but prior to that uh, primarily, you know, the enrollment is to be done by the banking institutions. So they played a very important role in the product delivery uh, and also as well as uh, creating the compensation which is being uh, released as part of the insurance uh, compensation. And, and that way it is a unique and, and uh, a very convenient uh, um, uh, user friendly or product distribution that reduces the expenses, you know, typically in in other lines of insurance, um, I'm sure um, most of you are aware, uh, the cost of marketing, the cost of distribution is the uh, uh, very important, a significant place, a significant part of you know the, the, the expenses, admin expenses. It could be as high as maybe a 12, 15 uh, percent. Here is a program uh, through uh, banking network and and CS and others, so we are able to basically reduce very significantly the cost of distribution. So this is another beauty of this product. And also it's a dynamic. Maybe um, uh, one way probably some people might look at is not okay, PMFA has been introduced, but you know, year after year, we are seeing some modifications, you know. But I see this as a very positive move. Every time the government hits up on it as some new idea, new feedback comes, the government of India is quickly, you know, I mean, uh, trying to bring that into the operational modalities. So basically these operational guidelines have uh, been updated from time to time to keep the product very relevant uh, uh, for the farmers and the other stakeholders. So that, may, that way is a very dynamic product. And also this product encourages extensive use of technology. Um, well, we will talk about that uh, in a while from now under digitalization of crop insurance and the use of innovative technologies. But the fact is, you know, uh, we have already seen uh, some facets of uh, technology being used in the last five years probably some are in the pipeline and probably we're going to see some in the next five to uh, 10 years time frame. 
So if, if, if you look at the numbers, the sheer numbers, you know, um, I, I suppose uh, the PMFA insures over 50 million farmers every year. And, and enrollment is a huge process. Uh, prior to PMFBY, you know, uh, the enrollment is to be done by the banks and the insurance companies to receive only the summary of the enrollment in terms of the number of farmers insured, the total actors insured or the total submission. But now since introduction of PMFY, we have uh, the granular details of the farmers. You know, I, I suppose as many as 50 different fields of the farmer are being captured while enrollment happens and over 50 million farmers annually, uh, uh, you know, uh, and being enrolled under the product. It's a huge database and, and that's being done through our 170,000 uh, bank branches, uh, primary agriculture corporate societies and, uh, and the common service centers. Uh, and another beauty of, uh, of this product is the DBT. You know, uh, prior to PMFBY, the claim amount used to be sent to the bank as a lump sum amount payable to various farmers covered by the bank branch. And the bank branch used to, you know, depending for the crop and the sum insured of each farmer, they used to distribute that money and create the account for the farmers. They used to take a month or two. But here is a product actually as part of the financial inclusion. Um, you know, the government of India wisely, you know, sort of put in place a DBT where the claim amount is directly uh, created into the account of the farmers. So this is also another beauty of this uh, uh, important product. So this product is largely, largely uh, kind of seamless integration of the, the various uh, uh, interests of the stakeholders, uh, the primary being the, uh, the farmers. So, uh, so this, this is a product we, we want to basically debate on the use of technology. Uh, I, I, I took some time to actually uh, talk about the product because I, I like this product very much and, and I think it's, it's a very important product. So we are talking about the technology. Um, uh, you know, technology has become a very important. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, actually, in the last one year of pandemic, we discovered that it's even more important, actually. Uh, we now probably doing almost literally everything sitting from home. So thanks to the, you know, the, the technology, uh, the network, uh, and various, you know, kind of uh, innovations we have seen, uh, probably webinar. This webinar is part of that, you know, probably going forward, maybe we will have far fewer physical conferences and probably we'll have more of these webinars so that, uh, you know, we can save cost yet we can get the, the same outcome uh, and the same benefit out of these, uh, the webinars. So technology is, is any field, of course, is an important uh, 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 driver of the businesses, uh, bring in efficiencies, uh, improve timelines, so in case of uh, PMFY, um, I'm I sure every one of you believe that the technology should, should lead to uh, uh, better products, um, should lead to transparency and product process, uh, should lead to ease in enrollment of farmers, should lead to a uh, reduction in premium rates uh, in terms of universalization of insurance as more and more farmers join uh, the program, I'm sure uh, the effect of uh, adverse selection get neutralized, that should lead to a uh, reduction in the premium rates, um, near real-time uh, communication among the stakeholders, and, and that should lead to interconnected uh, and integrated databases for quick process analysis, and, and, and I suppose it should lead to automated claim calculation processing for expeditious settlement of the claims. Uh, technology should lead to um, improve the operational efficiency and improve the entire farmer's experience with the product. And as you know, um, world over, you know, the crop insurance is, is well supported by the governments. Um, and, 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 and India, of course, uh, is, is, a, is a prime example of that, where nearly 85 to 90% of the cost of the risk premium is being paid by the government of India and, and participating states, because they see insurance as an important risk mitigation tool and a safety net for the farmers. So uh, the government is heavily invested into the, into the program. So therefore, you know, whatever technologies we talk about, that should bring, that should bring, that should lead to a value for the government funds which are being invested in the program. 
So that's how I think uh, uh, primarily we see technology uh, when it comes to uh, PMF UI. And uh, 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 it's my pleasure to be part of uh, this webinar. And thanks uh, uh, to uh, Cropin and other organizers for uh, contacting me and 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 uh, you know sort of asking me to uh, moderate this panel. It's my pleasure. Um, I have uh, I have uh, uh, a panel uh, of six uh, 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 very well known and uh, highly qualified, experienced uh, uh, insurance professionals. Uh, I honestly I believe they don't need interaction because they're so well known. Most of them are in the market for more than ten years, and some of them, for example, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Poshan Mahapatra has been there for more than thirty-five years, but nevertheless. There, there could be some, some participants who probably may not be knowing every panelist. So for the benefit of these uh, uh, participants, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, the panel, begin with uh, Pushan Mahapatraji. Uh, he's from State Bank of India. Uh, he, he came into State Bank of India General Insurance Company in, in the year 2014 as, uh, as a chief operating officer. And, and in 2016 has been uh, 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 appointed as uh, managing director and CEO. He continued in that position till July 2020. So during that four or five year period, um, he led uh, 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 SPA General with distinction and transformed SPA General uh, uh, into uh, one of the profitable uh, and sustainable organizations. Um, he, he was closely connected with crop insurance, had the benefit of uh, interacting with him uh, and a number of occasions discussing about crop insurance. Uh, uh, presently, um, he is, is, a, is a president of strategic investments and head of open markets within SPA General Insurance. Thank you, sir, for, for joining this as, as a panelist. Uh, then uh, let me talk about other panelists. Um, Apurva, Apurva Thatia, uh, he's been is there in the industry for more than 15 years. You know, I, he was there with AIC initially, then he went to ICS Lombard. Then he's been there with the Reliance General Insurance Company for a while. He's head of rural crop health and writing. He played an important role uh, 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 within, uh, in the, within Reliance General Insurance Company as well as within the industry in, 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 in uh, uh, making this uh, kind of a very technology savvy product in, in improving the underwriting practices uh, as well as contributing to the uh, larger industry uh, and lost a larger stake holding within the uh, product. Then we have Ajad Mishra is a senior vice president uh, for rural and agriculture business within HDFC Ergo. Uh, he had over 12 years experience. Uh, all last 12 years he has been with agriculture insurance and rural insurance. Um, he, he's pretty much involved in underwriting product development and claims management. Um, uh, so he, he's again, uh, you know, a very important uh, 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 pillar of you know this uh, program here. Then we have uh, uh, Ashish uh, Agarwal. Um, Ashish again has close to uh, 20 years of professional service. Uh, he's now representing Bajaj Alien Generations Company. He's a president and head of agri business. Um, he had the opportunity of working with the uh, International Water Management Institute, ICS Lombard, HDFC before he joined um, uh, Bajaj um, uh, Insurance Company. Then we have uh, Mangesh Patankar. Uh, he represents a reinsurance company, Swiss Re, uh, the world's uh, leading reinsurance company. He's been associated uh, with reinsurance and is part of Swiss Re for over 10 years prior to joining Swiss Re. Uh, he worked uh, uh, with ILO uh, uh, in the microinsurance uh, facility. He worked in Philippines in, in designing index insurance solutions uh, for those uh, uh, places um, in Asia. Uh, then uh, uh, we, we have Kunal Prasad. Uh, I, I can't say that I know him very much, but uh, this part of uh, this uh, webinar I came to know. I understand uh, Kunal Prasad, you know, he, he's basically is a co-founder of Cropin and a uh, chief operating officer, has over more than 12 years experience. And, uh, and he played an important role uh, 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 within Cropin uh, re in reaching 4 million farmers from across over 55 countries. So it's, it's, it's 
very important to have a, 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 have a, a chat form, which, which is uh, part of this discussion webinar. Uh, who have been working with governments, who have been working with uh, uh, various other entities, not, not just in India, but in other countries, uh, to have a kind of uh, cross-country comparison of how these technologies have been working. So Kunal, uh, you're welcome, and, and thanks uh, for being part of this uh, webinar. So now I think I've taken almost 10, 12 minutes uh, talking about webinar, the interactions. Now I think let me now move into, uh, into the topic uh, um, which we've all been waiting for. Um, um, I, would, I would propose, you know, given that we have six uh, panelists uh, and, and this subject is, is a vast subject, probably uh, we can discuss this for uh, maybe half a day. Uh, you can take any, any small topic within uh, technology uh, in agricultural insurance. We can still talk and debate about this for maybe hours together. But nevertheless, we have a time constraint. We've been given a time of 45 to 50 minutes and there is a Q&A after that. So given this in mind, um, I propose that uh, we do uh, roughly three or four rounds, subject to available give the time. And uh, uh, in the first round, uh, I propose we, we talk about uh, the policy related uh, uh, issues uh, uh, within you know, digitalization, and the use of technology in PM everyway and, and crop insurance. Uh, and the second round, probably we will take uh, uh, the, the, the concurrent issues related to the specific areas where the technologies are being used, uh, you know, what the experience has been and, and what to look forward to. And, and third one, of course, we, we can look at some of the, you know, some of the products or pilots uh, Maybe you know I'm sure you know the the insurance companies uh, have been uh, doing some pilots. They have their own innovations. Probably there might be a one or two case studies which I'm sure the panelists would like to present from their uh, point of view. Uh, and then of course, if time permits, then we will certainly go into you know some of the other uh, more relevant aspects of the use of technology uh, in PMF. So let me start with uh, start with you know taking uh, you know uh, what we call the policy part of the part of the uh, the technology use. See, as I said at the beginning of my uh, 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 conversation, that it's a multi-agency, a multi-stakeholder concept. Like you know, the government of India plays a very important role. Um, they 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 are the policy makers. So they are the facilitators. They are the enablers. But then you know that there are there are roles expected from different other agencies like states have to play a very important role, insurance companies have to play a very important role, uh, and banks or uh, banks and other uh, other you know uh, enrolling agencies CSC have to play an important role, and and of course there is a role for reinsurers in this. So there is a huge amount of data we are talking about here. For example, uh, on the enrollment, if you are enrolling more than fifty million farmers. So that's a huge amount of data, which is basically you know, residing somewhere in the system. So given the importance of the multi-stakeholders, uh, given the importance of a large amount of the data we are dealing with, and uh, uh, given the, the importance of this data, not only for the current season, but for, but for years to come uh, as a kind of, uh, uh, as a platform to, to review the programs and, and reform the programs, so I would like to take uh, a forward this uh, policy point of view. So let me let me start with uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, Apurva. You know, maybe I, I would actually ask uh, your 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 initial uh, uh, comments, Apurva, Ashish, and Ajat. See, for example, as I said, you know, I mean, we have a multi agency setup. Um, so unless we have a common goals, unless we see all the stakeholders see this as a single seamlessly integrated product, unless the agencies understand that this is one product they are contributing to. And unless they contribute, and unless they say, see their role properly, there's going to be something we're going to miss, miss out from this, in the outcomes we expect from the program. So from that point of view, how would you, how do you think that the interests are aligned uh, 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 to make sure that we have the best out of the program, we, del we deliver the best to the farmers, and and what kind of role the technology can play in aligning the interest of various stakeholders. 
Yeah, Apur, I can start. Yeah. So, uh, sir, first of all, I, I would uh, definitely thank the government of India and uh, all the state governments who have been participating in the PMFV. Secondly, I'll thank uh, AG Group, Think AG Group, who has actually convened this uh, conference after a long, long gap of this uh, pandemic situations and those all things. <clears throat> so it's it's an actually opportunity to discuss on again on the crop insurance schemes, which which I think have been a, a delayed from a long, long period. Uh, from the policy point of view, I think government of India has always been uh, very proactive to think on how new initiatives can be taken up and how the scheme could be made in such a manner that it is sustainable for a long time, long period. So there was a there was a demand from uh, many of the uh, insurance companies, state governments that year on year the premium rates get changed, the uh, the TYs get changed. So a long term tenders can be uh, introduced. Uh, Government of India introduced it with the three steps, three procedures of calculation of the TY. So I think I think from the policy point of view, Government of India has always tried to innovate and bring few new options and uh, bring, call, I would say, consolidate all the state government requirements and bring a common point where they can frame, bring a framework of a policy and try to accommodate each and every state. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Abhurva, you know, for your uh, quick comment. Uh, I think we all believe that uh, government of India uh, is playing a very important role, not just providing the budgets, but basically bringing all the stakeholders together uh, and and trying to find out uh, uh, if there are some pitfalls or there are some irritants. So timely intervention from government of India have been playing a very important role uh, in ensuring that you know uh, this this program runs smoothly and the benefits of insurance actually reach the farmers. So Ashish, uh, what's your view? You know, in, in aligning the interests, you know, to what extent we are using uh, the technology in aligning the interests of various stakeholders. Um, thank you, Dr. Rao, and thank you, Crop and Team, uh, for um, organizing this uh, conference uh, webinar, in fact, and inviting me to have my views on this uh, uh, digitization of uh, crop insurance. I would say, so Dr. Uh, Dr. Rao, that already you have covered many aspects of crop insurance. This, how this scheme has evolved and um, what kind of changes have happened so far and how the insurance company's role, uh, role is there and how the state governments are playing their role. On. All those things are kind of uh, being done very systematically. And um, obviously the government of India is playing um, to make sure that um, interest of all the stakeholders are, are getting captured properly. The best thing, I've never seen any program in which this kind of uh, uh, the, the kind of modification and the kind of uh, um, interest which government takes and the, they do revision in the guidelines because that that's the if you see in the last five years our third reason has been done in the in the entire scheme and that is basically to benefit the farmers so in terms of digitization if you see because as, as you mentioned uh, rightly that uh, this this scheme is now has reached to the farmer directly because earlier, if you see, uh, we used to get the premium from the bank and then uh, we used to pay the claim early when the farmers were not aware or maybe the bankers were not very sure that how much claim has to be paid to which, to which uh, farmer and it used to take a lot of time. But now the best thing is once the data is available, when the subsidy is there, the claim is getting uh, in the farmer account directly and, and that too within just uh, uh, 7 to 10 days time. And that is a kind of uh, the, the best uh, thing which, which, which government can do. And um, it, it has benefited a farmer a lot. And that is the reason if you see uh, in the last five years, the farmers coming with their own. Like earlier, it was mainly loony farmer business scheme. Means it was it used to happen mainly from the banks. But now if I remember the data correctly, more than 35% farmers are non-loony now. In which all the um, uh, other stakeholders like bankers, CSCs, uh, and uh, also now the farmers may get enrolled directly through the, through, through the NCIP portal. So a lot of distortion has happened. Uh, it is helping a lot. The only thing is that um, I think um, uh, state government should kind of come forward and this, this, this should give some time to the government of India and uh, implement it with a, with a full with full confidence because ultimately the idea is to make it uh, uh, a universal scheme and all the farmers, all the stakeholders should be benefited. So that is what we say. Oh, Ashish, thanks. Uh, thanks for you know uh, capturing the sense of the program. Uh, you know, how important to ensure that the, the benefits of the program, particularly the compensation released by the insurance company, 
uh, reaches the farmers as, as speedily as possible. Uh, uh, coming to Ajad, uh, specifically, I want, to, I want to know your mind. You know, as I said, we have been dealing with a huge amount of data. Like the NCIP portal, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a, such a massive uh, component of this uh, PMAB way, uh, enabling, you know, the large scale, uh, uh, you know, the, the enrollment as well as the whole, you know, a huge volume of data residing and, and which, you, which insurance companies can access, which the governments can access, which, which the state governments can access. Probably going forward, we might see actually, you know, other stakeholders getting access to the data. So, so what do you think, you know, Maybe I'm sorry. Uh, uh, did, did you get uh, uh, Ajad what I uh, mentioned? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understood. Yeah, yeah please. Thank you so much. Please go ahead. Yes, Good afternoon, all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Thinkage and Cropping Team for uh, uh, inviting us to participate in this seminar. Um, certainly, major points have already been covered by Rao sir. Uh, but few points just I want to add on the National Professions Portal. Uh, which I believe that this is one of the biggest digital intervention that we have seen in any kind of scheme. Uh, I mean, including cropping, uh, cropping insurance scheme. Uh, so way back in 2016, uh, when we were uh, uh, implementing uh, uh, PMABY scheme or restructure weather-based crop insurance scheme, at that point of time, uh, the the details of the document that is uh, that that is there. All these documents, hard copy of the documents, were collected from bankers which we used to call declaration form. Based on the declaration form, we used to book in our system and there was technically no central repository of any data at the central government level. Uh, during 2017, uh, when government of India came up with this national crop insurance portal and it was communicated to all bankers that uh, now uh, the, declaration, um, and, uh, the declaration form that used to be provided by bankers or the documentation that used to be provided directly to insurance company, now they have to make the farmer level data entry into the national crop insurance portal. So initially there, are, there was a lot of resistance that was faced by state government also and the central government also. But uh, government of India ensured uh, that they have uh, disseminated the information pertaining to uh, uh, the uh, implementation uh, of the scheme uh, in the national crop insurance portal. They ensured a uh, regular training module uh, to be shared with bankers. And what we have seen in last uh, four years now, the entire uh, farmer's database is already there in the National Crop Insurance Portal. So probably, um, I mean, four years back, uh, bankers used to have a lot of resistance on uh, making the entry, uh, uh, I mean, making the data entry individual level. But now they are very happy. In fact, uh, Government of India in the National Crop Insurance Portal also integrated the core banking system of you bankers who have the CBS system. So that is one of the biggest digital intervention that we can see of. For example, if we compare what used to happen in 2016 and what is happening in 2021, if government of India have to uh, reply to uh, some queries pertaining to uh, any district level uh, coverage detail, they can directly get it from the portal. If uh, a farmer want to search the status of the application, whether the status, is, uh, the status uh, has been uh, approved or rejected or pending for approval, they can directly get it in the system, I mean, in the portal. Uh, uh, with their application number. Um, uh, Government of India has also initiated uh, the inland letter dispatch to all farmers um, that has been done through insurance company. Currently, uh, earlier we used to have this manual weekly report of coverage all across India. Now it is also been, uh, you know, um, it is um, uh, there is already an upload model developed by Government of India. Currently, Government of India is also working on um, having um, uh, a sort of claim status search where um, all these uh, claims data will get integrated. So, so what I believe, sir, that uh, this is one of the biggest digital intervention by government of India. And uh, I mean, a lot of suggestions have been taken uh, from state government um, and uh, other insurance company and other bankers also. Uh, as mentioned by uh, Apoor and Ashish, uh, we, uh, there have already been three changes uh, in the revised operation guideline for last uh, five years. Uh, what we have seen, um, government uh, normally uh, takes suggestion from all stakeholders, which includes state government, bankers, insurance company, a group of farmers. And based on that, they are changing operation guideline. And certainly, uh, and currently, uh, they, they have also developed a dashboard uh, of the coverage data that can, that can be, uh, that you can check the data at district level, um, which, uh, which is already there in the National Propitious Portal. 
plus um, for example now um, uh, government of india because uh, because of the pandemic situation uh, what has happened uh, we have not been able to do the mass marketing activity uh, because of the social uh, distance norms that we had for one and one and a half year so lot of digital activities been promoted by government of india whether is is sending messages from vernacular languages uh, festival uh, combining festival messages with uh, steam features uh, a lot uh, for example uh, in next uh, month uh, government of india is planning to uh, start the crop insurance week so all these formats uh, the, the way the formats uh, needs to be taken how what are kind of activities marketing activities needs to be done uh, to ensure that uh, farmers do have uh, awareness about the utility of insurance especially the small and marginal farmers and they sh- they should understand uh, the role uh, of insurance in uh, uh, sustainable in their sustainable li- livelihood development that is being promoted by government of india and for la- especially in last one and a half year a lot of communication is going digitally even uh, farmers are getting message uh, mm-hmm. pertaining to uh, their coverage data uh, farmers uh, they have also de- in national crop issues portal they have also developed a functionality where farmers can uh, give the intimation and we have seen some successes especially in state like maharashtra uh, during 2020 lar- larger number of uh, you know um, uh, farmers intimation came through government of india uh, uh, government of india application only similarly uh, uh, what you have seen um, many states uh, uh, the penetration of you know uh, cc monitoring through government of india cc app had substantially increased so these are some of the great development that has happened uh, in ncip and the continuation is going on um, i mean they are also start also started updating pertaining the different kind of claims calculation in the system okay uh, ajad i think that's very comprehensive uh, uh, to t- talk about to talk about you know how the farmers are uh, uh, benefiting from the the digitalization of the crop insurance you know, how they are receiving various messages uh, you know you know about probably the claim payments and also probably the timely action they need to take uh, uh, to save their crops you know not just from the uh, uh, insurance point of view but from a larger crop protection point of view and uh, agriculture advisories from the agriculture department um talk about ncip uh, the national crop insurance portal i think it's as i as i mentioned it's it's a massive component of this program we have already seen the other integration and probably i think probably in some time soon probably we will see the land records uh, you know the digital land records uh, uh, being integrated probably that's going to be a massive development we we are looking forward to when that happens actually we would probably see a ca kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, game changer i would see it probably we will discuss that in the next round a little bit more and how this is going to help us uh, i would like to particularly uh, i know from uh, pushan ji you know uh, you, you have seen this you know digitalization the innovation technology uh, from a top floor you know you 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 are you are involved in a bank uh, prior to coming to uh, sbi general uh, then coming to sbi general also you have led this uh, from the front and, uh, and and just not uh, in agriculture but in uh, but other lines so what do you think basically you know uh, uh, this innovation innovative technologies or the digitalization and how this is going to actually uh, uh, change the way we look at uh, how we perceive insurance uh, particularly how farmers perceive this as okay uh, thank you dr rao and uh, thank you cropen for inviting me onto this platform see ultimately if we have to make this program sustainable over a long term period we will have to ensure that there is a end to end digitization which brings about higher transparency and also reduces the cost of operations when i say that because there is an element of opex which gets into pricing at some stage or the other so how do we really bring that down and that uh, just i would uh, like to carry on with uh, what azad uh, referred to on the ncip portal i think they have done a lot of great work i think lot more is in the making one is integrating all the banks and integrating their core banking onto the ncip second is also integrating all the insurance companies onto the ncip can we do it through a api call rather than looking at an upload download facility how do we really use technology to 
reduce the amount of time and effort spent on reconciliation and tagging the premium with the insured details so ultimately like what uh, dr meena uh, ms meena uh, spoke about that ultimately any of these programs has to be to the benefit of the ultimate beneficiary which is the farmer so how do i make it easy for him how do i give him the confidence that he is getting the right kind of coverage at the right time and the claim also gets to him on time therefore all the participants in the program have a very very important role to play with regards to their function that they do it in time because a claim delayed is actually a claim not paid because he is out of funds he has to do the next season or the next years uh, sowing how does he do that so therefore it is very very essential to start with integrating the core banking all the core bankings all the insurance companies digital bringing in all the land records aadhar integration is already there bringing in technology to actually do a lot of these claim adjudication that will be the next stage i think that is where we really need to move towards i know a lot of pilots are being done by various people insurance companies a lot of insurtechs and uh, fintechs are in this field reinsurers are also driving some uh, initiatives but i think with that we have to take that leap of faith and start productionizing some of these prototypes yeah uh, pushan ji thank you so much you know uh, uh, your perspective you know uh, the farmers being the central pillar of this program uh, that perspective is very important like whatever we do ultimately it has to result in in in, in a quick settlement to the farmers and a fair settlement to the farmers so that he has enough liquidity to continue his agriculture operation season after season so thank you so much um uh, mangesh i'm sure you'll agree with uh, the views you know uh, we have got uh, so far from four of the panelists but i have a specific uh, question to you and uh, you 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 uh, uh, being a reinsurer so i have two questions um to cover the time one um is um generally uh you have been uh, uh you know there have been conferences and uh, you know the meetings so uh, right now you know the, the insurers have access to the data through ncip so we had some some requests you know in the past uh, from from reinsurance companies that it will really help them if reinsurers also have access to this data that's one part i'd like you to uh, kind of elaborate why and secondly um what role you know because basically when we are talking about technology we are talking about the governments that state and central government we are talking about the insurance companies who are, who are the basically the forefront of uh, introducing and and uh, administering the technology so i want to know from you how you as a reinsurer what role can you play in in, in driving a supporting a technology or innovations in pmf sure uh, thanks uh, dr rao i think uh... first of all thanks uh, uh, to propin and uh, think tech team for uh, inviting the uh, here uh, and allowing uh, me to share the thoughts uh, uh, from uh, specific perspective uh, you may see also a lot of participants from other countries uh, participating in this event and uh, it just uh, it's a testimony uh, uh, how how relevant this uh, whole topic is and how critical is the indian crop insurance business is for the world uh i think i fully support the views that the uh, scheme that we have today is uh, fairly participatory in nature where views from uh, multiple stakeholders including uh, reinsurers are uh, listened to and respected i think it resonates well with the democracy that uh, we enjoy in india and here uh, as far as your two questions are concerned first is uh, the access to data and second is what is the role that we can play uh i would like uh, to rather uh, you know uh, uh, flip the sequence here i would like to first talk about a bit more uh, uh, start with the role of reinsurers in the scheme uh although we are a bit uh, distant player from the farmers because uh, 
we are mainly into B2B business uh, model uh, with the insurers. Uh, we have uh, actually taken a lot of efforts to bring in not only the financial capacity, which is needed to run this sort of uh, humongous scheme, but also a lot of insights uh, uh, from global markets uh, to make the crop implementation in the country a bit better. I'll uh, give a couple of examples here. Uh, one is I would like to proudly mention about uh, the policyable insight, uh, which we were able to bring in uh, on the topic of crop cutting experiment optimization. Uh, using a small pilot project, which was supported by Swiss Re and uh, AIC, Agriculture Insurance Company of India, about uh, seven years back. Uh, with the help of, of course, uh, state government of Maharashtra, Krida, uh, uh, and Nairobi. Uh, the whole project was uh, uh, located around the concept of how can we make the crop cutting experiment a bit easier for the states to handle. Can we reduce the number of experiments uh, without touching the accuracy much? And I think we were fairly successful in demonstrating that at least certain crops uh, uh, can be, uh, uh, you know, brought uh, into an optimized uh, CC setup uh, going forward. And glad to see that uh, Odisha government and a few other state governments have uh, also started adopting uh, this whole. Uh, method of uh, uh, optimized uh, crop cutting experiment not that this is this is a completely new concept uh, but but i think uh, a company like swiss re uh, companies like aic uh, getting into such uh, topics i think that definitely helped in pushing the overall policy discussion around uh, this matter uh, another initiative was uh, through rice uh, consortium r double i c e uh, where Swiss Re was a partner organization and uh, we tried to bring in more objectivity in the sowing failure declaration for uh, paddy crop in Tamil Nadu. I think both of these projects obviously, uh, you know, harness uh, uh, satellite data sets and a lot of machine learning insights, uh, which are basically the core themes of uh, the conference uh, uh, today. But I think uh, uh, CC optimization or sowing failure identification are just few issues, uh, I would say. And here I, I come to your uh, question related to access of data. Uh, today, I would like to focus a bit on, on, on this topic. Uh, currently, we have a beautiful multifunctional portal which connects with several stakeholders uh, as described by the other fellow participants here. Uh, now that we have you know, data uh, being collected over the last four or five years from different parts of the value chain of PMFBY, uh, can we uh, work a bit on uh, the matter of data repository and management of, of the data access? Uh, there is a good dashboard already uh, built in, 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 the, in the NCIP portal, which is accessible to everyone. Uh, but I'm sure we can, uh, uh, you know, further fine tune it and uh, make it more granular in nature because at this moment the information is available at the district level. Uh, so how how do we make that? Uh, for example, uh, we currently do not have a clear idea on which states uh, have paid uh, how many subsidies, uh, which claims are under dispute, uh, and at times we also struggle with the multiple series of uh, yield data sets. Uh, and I'm not too sure whether whether portal is the way uh, to uh, uh, to handle this, but I'm sure that that these are pertinent questions which need to be addressed in the longer run. Also, we are a bit unsure whether every insurer has an easy access to the central repository of the granular gram panchayat level data, because ultimately we are talking about a scheme which is being implemented at gram panchayat level. So from that angle, do we have insurance penetration figures, uh, which uh, which are available uh, to every insurer, uh, not only the implementing insurers, but uh, other insurers as well. Uh, so that, you know, they can uh, do a bit of uh, more informed decision making uh, at the time of bidding. Uh, this can also impact the rates uh, uh, in, a, in a better fashion, perhaps. Uh, other topic is, of course, uh, uh, related to land digitization, which is, again, remotely connected with the with the portal. Uh, and data access. And I think this uh, matter also needs a serious push, particularly from the state level, given that states are uh, custodians of, of the land records here. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, if, yeah, sorry. So uh, Mangesh, uh, you know, uh, this land records, you know, other things I think we'll certainly take up in the, in the sure. second round. Sure. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being uh, upfront and uh, transparent uh, and uh, letting us know why 
uh, uh, reinsurers uh, need access to certain kind of data at least, if not the whole data. Thanks. Right, thank you. So, uh, as I said, um, you know, it's a multi-agency, multi-stakeholder program. Uh, but this is another set of uh, uh, partners we found uh, relevant uh, after the introduction of PMABY uh, is the support services. You know, I mean, we, we have uh, starting from the verification of the bank records, um, monitoring the crop cutting experiments, and also providing uh, you know uh, crop health reports during the season as to how the crop is doing. So there are a lot of support services that also uh, found relevance in this space. So I'd like to know from Kunal, you know, I mean, uh, uh, as a sectoral uh, player uh, who's providing these services and also as cropping. So what do you see your role and, and, and how you, know, you are contributing to, you know, for the, uh, the efficiencies here? Well, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Rao. Uh, well, uh, when we talk about technology, right, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is to continuously innovate. And, and while we were listening to all the speakers here, we heard that in the last, last six years now, uh, there has been like, you know, three times where the policies have changed. And rightly so, right? Because the farmers, the challenges are different, right? The weather patterns, the climate change are, are impacting the, the, the patterns at what, what's happening in agriculture. Uh, so uh, going from a, from a broader perspective to coming to a very finer, minute perspective, detail going to the farmer level, it requires technology to continuously innovate. And, and that is what we are seeing uh, that we bring as support services to this particular larger initiative. Uh, uh, thankfully, like you know, four years back, uh, the government realized that you no, know, it's not only about digital. Uh, and, and we realized that you no know, insurance needs, insurance is, the, is one of the industry which is data hungry. Like you now the more you have data, the better you can build your products and the better you can service your customers. And the same is the case with technology players like us. The more we have the data, the better we can build in and, 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 and improve our models and increase our accuracies from 80%, 25%, or 90%, even beyond. Uh, so I think I think even for the, and, and what happens at the end is for insurance companies, for service providers like us, we can better service not only the farmers, a larger holistic problem, but going to the details of every single farmer. Uh, as technology, we can also innovate, like now uh, solutions. To, uh, there are different hybrid products which are also available in different markets. Like in talk of developed markets, there are hybrid products which are available. And all of these products, can be made possible when there is enough data to support each and every single farmer. And thankfully, as we are as we are listening, like now we have now the farmers' data, which is like 50 50 data for every single farmer. If we can integrate that, and that's happening, I, I, I see in, in the coming shorter time, integrate that with land record, and then overlay that with the satellite data, it becomes a very very interesting proposition to go to every single farmer and service in that particular perspective. Uh, over the last three years, we have also like you know, supported the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana, uh, and that, whole, that has also innovated like you know, as we work with them. Uh, initially, it was about the crop cutting experiment optimization, um, what Mangesh was talking about, which was done six, seven years back. Uh, the government realized that this has to be done again in a, in a holistic manner. Uh, so they gave the program to uh, initially around eight, eight part, uh, partners of theirs, and we helped the government to optimize and find the right locations of doing the crop cutting experiment. So that, that first project was, was uh, termed successful. After that, the government realized that, that it's not about only about finding the right locations using your, your optimization, but it's also finding the yield at them because that's what matters uh, to do the claim settlements at the easy, easiest way possible. So in the last three, three seasons now, uh, the program has changed now to an yield uh, estimation program. <clears throat> and the government has also changed the levers and they are going uh, accelerated manner. So from initially four to <clears throat> <clears throat> four to five districts that was given to us. Now we are, uh, now every season we are crossing around 25 districts in seven to eight states. And that's the level at which the government is now bringing those, uh, um, building those models. Uh, so hopefully what we see is, is these innovations would get into the mainstream uh, uh, programs of PMFY and could be leveraged by institutions which are partnering to build that collaboration all together. At the end, we see that the farmers really getting benefited from this insurance scheme and, and technology really playing a very important role in that. Uh, thank you so much, Kunal. I think uh, uh, undoubtedly, you know, most insurance companies are availing the services, you know, besides the government, you know, where you're uh, involved, you know, uh, engaged by MNCFC and others, you know, uh, for piloting certain technologies. So there are a lot of support services which are being used by the insurance companies and reinsurance companies. So I, I suppose I think, uh, you know, even technology, deployment of technology in these areas, uh, plays an important role in, in, in delivering the, the ultimate or you know, the benefit to the farmers. So, uh, 
So that brings us to the end of the first round. I think we consume more time than what uh, I'm staged at the beginning. Uh, so without uh, losing much time, I would like to start the second round. So in the second round, basically, we would like to discuss more the 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 day to day kind of you know the issues we see in, in implementation authorization. For example, I, I've identified three specific pillars, uh, um, you know, where the technology uh, uh, are playing a very important role. So the, these three pillars: one, of course, the NCIP and the enrollment process. Um, NCIP as I see, um, it, it's already doing a massive job, no doubt about that. Uh, but as you look at the operational guidelines, which is which is which is so comprehensive document, a 140-page document, so comprehensively describes most functions and and the SOPs. Um, uh, the NCIP is also probably uh, as we go forward, uh, we will we'll have you know the threshold yields stored and probably you know that when the crop cutting is done, the average yields also go into the the final yields also go into the NCIP, and there is all. The exposure data, the underwriting data is already residing in that uh, particular portal. So basically, now the claim automation, you know, when, when the NCP portal has the underwriting data on the threshold yields and the and the actual yields, you know, the claim uh, claim processing, claim approval can be an automated process. So once we have uh, the the state and central government share of subsidy with us or with the insurance companies. So that should lead to a kind of a very expressive settlement of claims. So that's one area I flag. What, what, what exactly we need to do on that? And the second one is, you know, the yield estimation. You know, the, the ultimately the the most crucial element of you know the claim settlement is the 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 yield. You know, and not just the threshold yield, but the current yield. You know, we know we have inherited a system of crop estimation which is as old as probably you know 60 or 70 year old. Very well established, statistically proven system, but then current requirements are different. So uh, our government rightly brought in a lot of audit process, transparency in the, in the process. So and and the government is also running a lot of other pilots. You know, you know, we, we know of the smart sampling, we know of the two-step yield estimation process, and probably a, a proxy yield data using technology. You know, uh, not just merely to use as a uh, as a green, as, as when you escalate the matter, uh, as when issues raised, but as a kind of a normal process to settle the claims. And the third area is basically the land records and its integration, so we can derive the the best benefits of you know uh, having the complete land records uh, as you can visualize on your own system, like you know vis-a-vis -vis the farmer who's insured, who can see you can you can identify a farmer using the other number, the, the telephone number, the customer number, as you can also actually would like to see a farm of what crop you have sold in a given season. You can overlay your uh, crop map of the current season on that, and you can actually see whether he has grown that crop or not. You can check the insurable interest. You can do a lot of that. I feel that also another you know, kind of a game changer. So the second round, I would like to you know, uh, have your thoughts on these three areas, uh, how NCIP portal you know, can get further you know, kind of uh, add uh, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, bring an innovation into it and add more process in built into it. And, and secondly, the yield estimation, the new new methods, uh, are new indices, if you have new products, and third is the land records. So I would like to start with the, uh, uh, start with the uh, Mangesh, you know, although just uh, 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 close with you the first round, but starting with you the second round. So um, when it comes, let me see the enrollment, you know, uh, uh, the government of India certainly wants, you know, they're, they're creating huge budgets. For example, you know, they, they've uh, uh, budgeted 16,000 crores for 2021. So the government objective is very clear. They want as many farmers uh, to get enrolled and receive the benefits of this. So the portal is playing an important role and the CSC, like agents like they're playing an important role. So what do you think, you know, what, what other innovations can, what, how, what other technologies can actually help us in increasing the insurance penetration? How how we should have more farmers, uh, uh, you know, understanding the the importance and realize the benefits of insurance, the insurance concepts, and and we have larger numbers uh, coming into the program, leading to the universalization of insurance. Uh, thanks, Doctor Rao. I think uh, one uh, critical component uh, uh, that that needs to be addressed is uh, uh, 
uh, the the way in which uh, the non loni uh, sales has been happening across the country if you see there are only two states uh, where where non loni is a dominant segment uh, otherwise in most of the other states uh, the subscription of insurance still happens uh, backed by the agriculture loans so i believe uh, there is a lot of scope Uh, just going beyond uh, your uh, normal, uh, uh, you know, uh, crop insurance uh, product-related uh, matters. This is really a sales-related issues uh, uh, issue which which needs to be addressed. Uh, various ways uh, ways to address. I think there are, there is a lot of uh, stepping up of CSC, uh, uh, which which has been observed in the in the last uh, uh, two three years. I think CSC channel is emerging as uh, one of the uh, biggest channels uh, to uh, uh, increase the subscription of crop insurance across villages. But I think apart from that, uh, can we have a bit of a, uh, a mobile uh, uh, sort of setup? And I think uh, Ashish, perhaps you can uh, uh, talk a bit about uh, the village uh, insurance network uh, initiative that uh, uh, you uh, are currently spearheading. uh I, i won't take much time on that but i think the fundamental idea is can we uh, you know uh, increase the uh, footsteps in the uh, uh, rural area uh, where where we have more agents we have uh, uh, we deploy more brokers uh, we deploy more staff uh, from the uh, insurance company to uh, assess the feasibility of uh, selling such products maybe not not through uh, the typical laptops which are used by cscs but by maybe uh, you know the mobile devices or uh, tabs i think that is something which uh, uh, is perhaps is is a topic which will definitely increase the footprint of uh, of insurance another is a really policy level sort of decision uh, and uh, here i would like to uh, take a few names like uh, states of uh, uh, jharkhand uh, state of uh, west bengal uh, where where there was a policy level decision made to universalize the scheme uh, so that uh, the farmers uh, share of premium is also picked up by the state government itself. so there is a heavier subsidy inflow from the state government heavier commitment from the state government but what uh, it helps in doing is something which uh, is beyond imagination actually it uh, makes the overall scheme universal in nature in that state Uh, it also avoids bit of an anti selection that we may see in in the scheme like this and in general in the longer run this definitely helps uh, insurers uh, in having a more stable portfolio so i i would say these these two initiatives are are really critical uh, in in making sure uh, you know our uh, footprint increases uh, from from scheme perspective thanks doctor okay uh, thanks mangesh probably it's important that i also take a view from the from the the front line uh, the insurance companies how they see this so uh, may i ask apurva exactly how you see this sir i think i think it's a uh, the ncip portal which is currently working on a uh, on a web uh, access i think it's a high time now when uh, the digitization needs to be automated i think uh, the the uh, portal now needs to come on the application which should be an android based application which can be actually given an access to the agents to the brokers to the farmer even who really wants to enroll himself and uh, once if this this access has been given and along with the land record digitization i think if these two things have been uh, uh, the api integrations have been done uh, for these two things the farmer can enroll himself take the uh, confirm that he is showing this particular land uh, at this acreage and this crop has been sown i think uh, along with that the coordinates can come across to the uh, insurance companies to the central government and basis those coordinates we can actually do a crop masking and identify that the declaration which farmer has given is really uh, he is he showing that particular crop or not or because of the sum insures or because of any uh, different uh, reason he has chosen that particular crop so i think it's it's now a time when we need to move on from an web application to the mobile applications and on the second okay. uh, uh, sir uh, on the second uh, question i think i think now uh, the uh, yield modeling it's it's the responsibility of the insurance companies now to come on the field collect the as many as ground truthing points provide it to the government 
provide it to the agencies which are already on the field for the uh, remote sensing technology and this thing now government will have to create a repository of the satellite images those ground truthing can be utilized for crop masking for identification of the crops areas these all things and then utilizing these all items for the crop modeling so if if you really get the crop masking ground truthing points a huge number of ground truthing points i think the accuracy level of uh, risk or the accuracy of the yield estimation will be much higher i think i think kunal has uh, rightly pointed out that if uh, the land record integrations are done i think the crop masking is a really easy step to go across okay uh, uh that's that's an important uh, uh, observation apurva so would you like besides the points which have been which have been aired by apurva ashish or rajat would you like to to add anything more to what apurva said on this sir uh, in, in terms of enrollment uh, through, through digital process i think um, mangesh and apurva has uh, already pointed out a lot of things actually but what what we believe sir uh, insurance is still uh, something uh, for which a customer still needs to take some double opinion like uh, like before getting enrollment uh, they, all, they always want to know, understand that what kind of benefit they will, they will be getting but still insurance is not something like that uh, anybody comes with their own they need some kind of assistance and that is the reason if you see though government of india is doing lot of effort in fact uh, a huge amount of uh, budget is is there to create awareness about the program and around 0.5% of the total premium is getting um, used only to create awareness okay and uh, no doubt csc has done a lot of um, uh, good work in terms of uh, uh, getting insurance uh, uh, providing enrolling those farmers who are coming and who basically want to get insurance and they can uh, uh, at least uh, make an effort to reach out to the csc centers but still there are uh, a huge chunk of farmers like at least 50 50 60 percent farmers are there who they are not coming with their own in fact there might be other reason that either they are not aware about the program or they don't want to re- to go to the bank or they don't want to go to the csc center so i think uh, to increase the enrollment now the next step is to reach out to them I means uh, of india is doing a lot of effort so like uh, rightly said by purva and mangesh that i think uh, from this portal now we need to take this portal to the farmer uh, farmer level. so it means basically either through some kind of app the with which a farmer can use because now most of things are happening through this mobile only and thankfully this uh, covid has kind of uh, um, um, kind of make everybody aware that how how they can use this mobile app to do transactions so this will this this will go a long way and i'm sure uh, like uh, uh, from our side as a bajaj land we have developed a app called, called farm mitra right and it is this farm mitra app has all the facilities uh, in which a farmer can get all kind of information related to their policy related to their claims they can also intimate the claim all those things are available and it is being used very widely in fact more than 4 lakh customers are there now uh, who are kind of doing transaction they are they are trying to get their information uh, now actually we are now just requesting government of india to integrate our uh, this mobile app uh, to, to the portal so that the farmer can also buy the insurance from to the student sap that if, if, if this happens definitely enrollment will, happen, will increase okay ashish i think you made uh, a, a very important uh, point like you know instead yeah. of uh, expecting the farmers to come to csc or, or come to the portal you take a portal a miniature of the portal to the farmer yeah you know, so, so that basically you know uh, farmers don't have to travel or probably it makes creates a convenience to the farmers to basically come and take the notice So Ajad, would you like to uh, add anything to this? Um, just to add uh, two points, sir. Um, about Additional I- points, please, if if you. Want. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, on the enrollment part, the government of India, as as I was mentioning earlier, that in last one and half year, most of the mass marketing activities had been stopped because of the social distancing measures that uh, I'm mean, that is already there uh, implemented all across the district because of this uh, COVID lockdown. So government of India has focused a lot into digital <clears> marketing <throat> activity. so what we have seen uh, there has been a lot of sms blast video content blast uh, today if you see um, as um, as mentioned by ashish they have taken a separate budget uh, for uh, all mass media activities and now we can see advertisement coming in today there were some advertisements in up um, uh, newspapers local newspaper uh, wherein um, they have shown uh, a testimonial of the farmer there are some video content that is being uh, this, uh, that is being targeted by uh, state government um, where uh, short stories of uh, you know uh, 
farmers who are who who have been benefited from crop insurance uh, have been uh, may, have have been uh, demonstrated over there and which we believe that it will ultimately culminate into a insurance transition so that is one part uh, so enrollment part a lot of digital activities being done and that's well been uh, that's well been disseminated through all across uh, all the different kind of agencies of uh, state government and also district administration uh, on the claims part um, just to add on to uh, uh, what mangesh uh, apu said that um, the claim calculation part a lot of pilots have already been done uh, for example sir uh, there has already been a, uh, initially it was launched as a pilot the smart sampling concept initially it was launched as a pilot uh, in odisha now it is it has become a full fledged exercise uh, similarly government of india wanted to have this smart sampling uh, activity uh, for major or homogeneous crop uh, for all uh, paddy and wheat belt all across india so this uh, needs to be taken up further uh, and uh, just to add on to what uh, um, um, uh, our, our panelists said that if we can have uh, the uh, land integration and also the cadastral map then definitely uh, we can do a lot of activity based on satellite based data uh, on uh, calculating uh, localized uh, you know uh, um, uh, claims losses or crop identification all these activities can be carried out once we have both the land integration and land with the cadastral mapping and that this is something that kunal also mentions yeah ajad i think we, we all uh, fully agree with what you said uh, you know how we can actually uh, uh, digitize some of these concepts and take to the farmers so i'll come to pushing you actually this is not exactly technology but you were a banker probably once a banker you are always a banker so you know what we are seeing is you know i mean in some sections of the uh, probably uh, banking uh, you know it, it's a collateral to the to the uh, lending which which the bank does uh, so uh, it, it's it's no doubt you know because now this individual entry of the farmer details and all that is actually is is something which probably may have uh, added to the the workload of the of the concerned people on the banking level so does it go with you know the, whatever uh, uh, the it platforms they have the banks have and whatever we have uh, in ncip so is there a correct interface is, is the banking sector is fully in line with exactly uh, in, in uh, ncip objectives uh, uh, wait uh, on this i think uh... the banks have taken a lot of steps to uh, integrate their it systems with the requirements of the insurance sector because uh, at the end of the day it uh, acts as a risk mitigant for them because one of the major uh, reasons for uh, overuse in agriculture could be natural calamities or crop failure for any other reason i don't means i won't say that all the banks are at the same level at least the leading banks have taken a lot of efforts to bring that into sync and uh, uh, i think it's in their own interest that ultimately if they are able to smooth very seamlessly transfer the data that they are capturing and basically the data that is required is also the data that they use for their under it's not that we are asking for something very very different most of the uh, at least the uh, more larger and more sophisticated banks are collecting this data for their underwriting so if it is already there it's a question of really building that interface so that this data travels seamlessly and in turn from ncip it should travel seamlessly to the uh, insurance company then only that whole cycle really works okay uh, i think that's very important perspective from from a banking uh, dimension um, now let me actually you know spend some time on the on the on the technologies the pilots you know um, we know that uh, mncfc has been in the forefront uh, of you know uh, doing uh, or uh, launching several pilots uh as uh, such i believe the government of india ministry of agriculture has tasked mncfc uh, to carry to carry the technology uh, uh pilots on the, on the eels um probably new indices that's all probably uh, we, we we've been talking about the smart sampling we have been talking about the two step uh field process all been incorporated in the operational guidelines 
So I have two questions for the panelists. One, uh, what is the current status of uh, the spot sampling uh, and the two-step process? Is uh, has it been actually been used? Uh, has it been used for for um, uh, picking the samples, uh, packing, uh, you know, arriving the yields? Or has it been actually implemented as part of the PMA by claim settlement or the yield estimation? That's my first uh, query to the panelists. The second one will be, you know, um, this is a massive scheme, you know, this is a massive scheme. And we know from experience of other countries, uh, wherever the, the scheme of this, this volume, uh, this magnitude is being implemented, there is a huge technical, you know, kind of a, a backup. To, to do the R&D work and, and to, you know, to, to, to handle uh, most of the technology pilots so that you know, the correct in, inputs gets channelized into the, into, the, into the program. So I just, I would like to say, for example, you know, we know that MNCFC uh, under the leadership of late uh, Shibendure, I mean, was such a nice uh, uh, gentleman, unfortunately we lost him uh, to the COVID, very unfortunate. Uh, he, he was totally committed he he was totally you know kind of uh, a ownership shown from his side from his uh, institution, but given the enormity of you know the tasks we are looking at, because as I said you know the, the we, we might do anything, but ultimately you know the side the foundation has to be very strong. Once you have a strong foundation, you know in terms of the yield estimation or the process we are doing automatically everything will result in you know benefits to the stakeholders. So my first question is. Um, whether these smart sampling and the two-step process have been done in any of the states, if, if it's been done, you know, about what are the results, how it's being perceived. The second is, you know, we know that M MNCFC has been doing an excellent job. And, uh, and uh, do you think like, you know, this we will continue probably, or we, do, we, we think probably uh, uh, some more, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, resources have to be mobilized uh, for MNCFC to really kind of, you know, uh, 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 improve the timelines or improve the outcomes. So probably again, you can, you can start in alphabetical order, starting with Apurva. Uh, sir, I think uh, the smart sampling has already been implemented in Odisha state. And I think from 2019, they have been implementing this thing. So the results have ob obviously been uh, very nice. Uh, so the, the property experiments have uh, shown a very uh, positive results. The actual yields are coming across in front of all the all the other people, and I think the loss ratios have dramatically reduced. So I think uh, this will definitely come uh, benefit to the premium rates in the next two three years. So I think uh, the the first point or the uh, the objective of the government of India is getting fulfilled uh, by streamlining the cropping experiments and the premium rates to be stabilized. On the second point, I think uh, I think uh, the the efforts, the the commitment from Racer was excellent, but uh, but we need to understand that things. If we have to really stabilize that, we need an independent organization, or the TSU needs to take up this thing now as as a uh, making an as an independent uh, team all uh, team complete. To uh, digitize these all things, I think I think uh, Shubhendu Ray sir did a great job, and uh, he was very committed uh, to this thing. And unfortunately, we lost him. Uh, but now, now it's time. Uh, I think uh, uh, government of India needs to think about it and make a complete uh, a separate organization about this thing to support and bring these all uh, pilots or studies in front of the public and uh, bring the results of the same and implement it on a larger way. As in NCIP, uh, Government of India took 50 odd districts to implement MNAIS scheme. So now it's time when Government of India can come up that these are our studies, these are our results, and we are implementing this in 50 odd districts as a full-fledged scheme for this thing. Or the yield settle, or the claim settlement will be using these uh, methodologies only. Okay, Apurva, I, I, since you're, you're taking an example of Wadisa and, and uh, uh, Reliance and, of course, HDFC, both were present in Wadisa in 2021, probably 2021. So let me go to Ashish. Uh, you know, are there any states, more states other than Wadisa, which have you know, kind of implemented these 
uh, implemented means being actually use the results of the smart sampling in the, in the, the way the crop cuttings uh, samples have been taken. Sir, we are aware that government of India since uh, inception of this scheme, uh, they were doing a lot of pilots going to use the technology driven uh, CC to kind of replace the CC and use technology to, to address the crop. Uh, so a lot of pilot has been done. Uh, as you are aware that uh, no, it has not been implemented in full fledged manner in any state. But I would like to kind of uh, uh, cite an example. Uh, I think uh, the technology has played a very important role like uh, uh, in case of what happened in the year 2019 in Maharashtra when uh, uh, there was unseasonal rainfall uh, at the uh, harvesting stage of soybean crop and almost all the farmers, means more than around 60 lakh farmers gave the intimation to the government and the insurance company. And it was, become an, it was a kind of nightmare to handle those kind of intimation, right? Uh, to how to kind of do the, because uh, as per the scheme, uh, we were supposed to visit the field and do the survey and uh, settle the claim, which was actually impossible task because uh, you cannot conduct more than um, uh, more, around 60 lakh survey uh, uh, individual basis. So at that time, I think, um, uh, MNCFC and also NR, um, NRSC, they played a very important role. They, they kind of assisted mm -hmm. government of India and government of Maharashtra to kind of uh, give the assessment about the losses, that, that how these losses could be assessed without going the field. And it has uh, given a very transparent and a very systematic kind of approach, uh, basis which the insurance company settled the claim. So that has happened, sir. So it is being, it is being done. I won't say that it has been accepted, but as and when it is needed, I think government of India is taking help and all the state governments are taking, taking help and they're trying to use the technology for loss assessment. But just one point which I would like to highlight here is, as of now, whatever effort is being done, it has been done mostly to uh, use a technology for uh, um, uh, CC optimization kind of thing, right? But the important USP of the PMFDY is the localized claims. If we can settle the claim at local level, if we can kind of settle the grievances, if we can handle the uh, individual claim in a timely manner and settle the claim, then this scheme is true. Because earlier, whatever was there, it was there earlier, I mean, MLIS also, NAS also. But I think uh, this um, uh, localized claim has to be settled in a very uh, technology-driven manner, which will be helpful for the uh, insurance company, to the reinsurance company, to the farmer also. And it will give a different kind of advantage. Uh, for that, I think there's a, there's a need uh, by all the insurance company and also to the, uh, with the governments to kind of come up with the technology, use that to, to settle the claim. For that, we are also doing some pilot with some agencies, and I'm sure it is going to help us a lot. And um, uh, I think that is something which the government of India should now start uh, focusing on, because uh, if we're not going to settle the claim on an individual basis, then um, uh, the interest uh, kind of, you know, the farmer uh, uh, is kind of coming down or um, it is taking a lot of grievances also. Okay, Ashish, you tell us, you know, um, is there any state which you, which you have actually uh, done the two-step process in the estimation uh, during 2021? I am not aware, sir. I don't think anybody has done that. Okay. So uh, just to add, uh, Dr. Rao, like, um, so yeah, the, the yield estimation process, there are partners still working like in 2020. 2021 is just the year that is starting, right, uh, the Karib season. But last year, like you no, know, uh, both for Kharif and Ravi, like you no, know, like you no, know, Cropin was working in seven states in more than twenty-five districts uh, for both of these uh, seasons, and this yield estimation was done. And uh, to to also uh, like you know, put a point to Ashish that you know, it was also done at the insurance unit level. That's the Gram Panchayat level. Uh, so both the uh, both the crop cutting optimization was also done. And the yield estimation was also done at the uh, Gram Panchayat level, so that the farmers which are growing those crops and have taken the insurance can be uh, the set the 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 insurance settlements can happen based on that. So uh, this was a project, and this is I think this is also the right forum to also uh, like you know uh, get convinced and also ask the government to really bring that uh, implementation of technology at scale uh, even at the central PMFBI level. Okay, I think uh, Kunal, that was an important intervention because you are involved. You are one of the vendors, I think, uh, uh, used by the MNCFC for conducting these pilots. Uh, Ajahn, I want to uh, come to you uh, with a specific uh, uh, question on the localized calamities. Uh, I may be wrong, but what I've been uh, hearing uh, from the market is there have been a delay in settlement of localized calamities. And, uh, you know, of course, when you look, go into the reasons of the delay, then uh, the couple of things I heard was basically when 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 an event because you know localized calamities is related to a specific events which have been uh, defined in the operational guidelines. Uh, not every loss, you know, it is because of certain perils which have been defined, identified as mentioned in the operational modalities. 
So what I heard from you know some source is that every time there is an event, whether there is a loss or not, you know, I mean, the insurance companies start receiving uh, a huge number of uh, uh, loss intimations. So that is making it difficult for the insurance companies to speedily you know attend to the uh, to the you know go to the farm and uh, individual farms and and uh, you know assess the losses and settle the claims. Uh, so I want particularly you know the underwriters, you know, all three of you, could you could you think of something? how a technology could help us uh, here uh, in fast to ensure that farmers only the insured farmers were affected by the uh, defined peril who have suffered the loss actually intimate secondly you know you are able to cross check that using a technology that you know this farmer is actually insured and he is actually planted the same crop as actually insured so, and actually the event has happened so you can actually send out the people and they can actually assess the losses and that would actually lead to a quick, faster settlement of claims. Is there any way technology uh, can actually enable this process here? So again, start, let me start yes. with that one. Apura, you are, you are, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I think, sir, uh, I think the, the first step and the first uh, thing which we discussed in the uh, session of this was land record indications. I think government of India is already working on uh, the portal uh, where uh, all the claim intimation needs to be through the government of India's uh, uh, application or the portal through which all the uh, intimations are to be updated. If, if the land record integrations are also done for all the states, I think uh, the first step, the verification of the farmer is done through the portal itself that is the farmer insured or not. Secondly, the land which is to be insured and the land which has uh, actually suffered the localized calamity. The third step could be uh, if the land record integrations are done, the coordinates can be uh, or the cadastral maps can be provided. The coordinates can get to the insurance companies, basis which the pre and post, the pre incidence and the post incidence uh, images can be captured from the uh, uh, the agencies which are already involved into the satellite image providing agencies. And that I think that will really help to foster the settlement of the claims. Okay, uh, your, your take Ajad and Ashish on this. Sir, uh, just to add on to what uh, Approve said, um, I mean, during the localized risk, uh, I mean, it, it, is, it has been clearly mentioned uh, that there are certain defined parallels to be covered under localized risk. And also, uh, the proxy indicators have been uh, defined in the uh, notification in the operation guideline. But um, certainly, uh, the current practice is whether we receive an intimation uh, based on, um, I mean, uh, if uh, the intimation has been received in defined timeline and for the name peril, we are going ahead and uh, doing uh, the loss survey. But one of the incidents that uh, Ashish was referring to, what happened in Maharashtra in 2019, suddenly you have, say, 20 lakh intimation. And within a span of 10 days, we have to do the survey that is not practically possible. So in that case, uh, uh, I mean, technological intervention can always be looked into. Uh, sir, uh, I mean, earlier also we were discussing on the smart sampling in CC. The same thing, uh, a sort of smart sampling can be done uh, for the localized risk uh, intimation also. Uh, there are two important things, uh, important um, requirement uh, could be for smart sampling. For example, in CC also, uh, for the, the project that is being done in Odisha. Um, the smart sampling has been done uh, to, uh, I mean, there are two primary objectives of smart sampling. One, to have a representative yield. And the second part is to reduce the number of CCs. So uh, on the smart sampling that is that is being done in Odisha, uh, good representation can be arrived and that, that can be clearly seen. But uh, the reduction on CC has not yet happened. Um, sim so same thing uh, needs to be, uh, I mean, this is also a part no, of the Yes. Ajat, can you specifically uh, talk about the localized calamities part? So, so my point is, sir, uh, even in the in the case of localized calamity, be, if we are receiving, say, uh, one lakh intimation and we have to do survey within 10 days and we have to go for area approach, uh, tech, um, I mean, satellite data can be used uh, to, again, classify uh, those uh, uh, plots into good, moderate, uh, bad or average plots. And uh, area which uh, the area approach estimation under localized risk can also be ascertained uh, using smart sampling. And the second part is if we have the traditional mapping, if we have the data, uh, the geo coordinate data based on um, our internal uh, remote sensing team or based on the agency uh, 
notified agency, we can always uh, find out uh, if uh, the farmers, um, I mean, the uh, uh, pre-event and the post-event um, scenario of the particular field, and also we can identify the crop. Uh, has anyone, one has anyone has anyone used the drones or so to identify the areas affected uh, and the, uh, the market, the areas which are, which are affected to help you in faster settlement? Has anyone used the so drones? Yeah, drone has been used, sir. In fact, not only by her, but in fact, all the insurance companies are using drones as and when it's needed. But drones you can use only when there's a very uh, when the calamity or event has not affected the uh, huge volume of fish because it's a very costly and also time uh, process, right? Yeah. Do it when the effect of a hell storm or effect of uh, excess rainfall is has a, the, it's only limited to one or two village or ten village kind of thing. So we have used this drone technology in Maharashtra. We have used this in uh, MP also, you know, just to get some idea. And we have used that to cross verify the field result because whatever surveyor kind of uh, some, um, um, give the report, we just try to verify that they were correct or no. Okay. Uh, let me. I think, sir. Uh, I'll just add one thing with uh, Ashish's point that uh, the drone drones can actually be utilized when, even if there is a, a pre-swing failure or there is a midterm calamity announced by the government. Okay. I think I that think at that point of time, the drones can also be utilized. Yeah, I think that's very relevant uh, point. Uh, Kunal, do you use you know your crop in? Uh, are you deploying the uh, uh, drones uh, or UAVs and the, who are into any kind of service, a similar service? Yeah, so uh, like now, depending on the scale, again, like now, uh, answered earlier, like now, uh, if there are very localized challenges that we face, that we see, uh, uh, which needs a very high level of detailing, that is where we use drones because the cost of operations of a drone is not scalable uh, to the extent of going to a district level or state level, right? So we only use it on a sampling basis, uh, but then we extrapolate that drone data uh, uh, using the satellite data, which is the primary data for us for our assessments. Uh, but yes, uh, for need basis, we use drones at times. Okay, so I think uh, probably we are running towards you know towards the five o'clock. I don't, I don't know how much more time we we have. I need to know from the from the organizers. But before that, I have few important questions. Uh, I want uh, Mangesh to kindly you know take those questions. One, Mangesh. You know, I mean, the technology. You know, as as I said, you know, as we all agreed, you know, it has to bring in efficiencies in whatever we do. So in case of insurance, as I said, you know, encourage farmers in large numbers, reduce the rates and the universalization and faster settlement, fair settlement, you know, all these are the objectives. So it means basically when you talk about fair settlement, you know, we also talk about new, new products as such, right? So, you know, we have the yield index uh, primarily, and we also have the, the weather-based index. Which, which, which was in great demand uh, uh, probably 10 years ago. But uh, I think in the last four or five years, I seem to have lost the shine. And uh, probably, you know, I, I don't know if there's anything, uh, uh, the latest technologies can actually help the WBCS to regain the glory of 10 years back, that's one part. The second part is, you know, I mean, uh, the new, new indices. For example, you know, we know uh, AACI introduced uh, a, a product in West Bengal, uh, using the CHF crop health factor. And that's been used in the entire state, just not a pilot of you know, one crop or one district. That's been used as a, a massive, you know, a widespread kind of a fully used, utilized product. So what's your take on this? You know, I mean, I, this new technology is leading to new product concepts, new products. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Dr. Ravi. I think a uh, very important question because so far I think uh, uh, the, the discussion uh, closely revolved uh, around uh, uh, PMABY as a product. Uh, we have, of course, inside PMABY, the yield index component and the uh, sort of indemnity style component, which uh, is related to your uh, localized uh, calamities. But I'm sure we can uh, think a bit uh, beyond yield as a parameter of indemnification and uh, reduce uh, its significance to bring in a more objective assessment of uh, crop stress. I think the current guidelines of PMABY thankfully allow uh, certain interventions, uh, mainly around uh, yield models and uh, use of other indices to reflect uh, the losses. So I believe there is a lot of scope in the current PMABY product itself to bring in uh, things related to, let's say, weather index. Uh, as I think uh, some of the participants mentioned, uh, uh, particularly around post-harvest uh, 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 loss mechanism, um, soil moisture index as well, or maybe NDVI or other vegetation indices. So that's that's one part. When it 
when it comes to the context of PMFBY. But I think beyond the uh, beyond the PMFBY scheme states, uh, we have already heard a bit from uh, Mr. Meena today uh, around the product that was created by Bihar government, uh, uh, which uh, seems to be uh, fairly uh, in sync with what what PMFBY does, but a bit more on on technological front. Uh, this is to reduce the dissonance between the premium subsidy spent and the claim amount as per it. Uh, but I would like to definitely highlight uh, the innovative product tried out by uh, West Bengal government, uh, AICI and uh, NRSC uh, last year in 2020. I'm really missing the representation from uh, AICI here because they were closely involved in this uh, product uh, uh, and worked a lot uh, with NRSC and with West Bengal government uh, to bring this uh, product on ground. Uh, I will leave aside the monetary aspect of uh, insurance mechanism here because there is a surplus sharing mechanism uh, involved in, 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 in this uh, uh, model uh, because that's a bit uh, debatable topic uh, uh, depending on the risk appetite of the insurers. But no, no, uh, as true. far as the product is true, we are not uh, true. We are not talking about risk sharing. We are just talking exactly. about the technicalities of the product. Exactly. So as far as exactly as, as far as product is concerned, it, it revolves around the concept of crop health factor, which in other words. Uh, you know, it tackles the crop stress rather than the reduction in the yield. That's the fundamental difference between that product and the typical yield index product that we see under PMFBY. Or let's say in prior uh, years, we had seen that in uh, MNAIS or NAS products. Uh, the models are basically expected to evolve over the years uh, and a lot of ground truthing efforts are already being done by AICI and the uh, uh, government uh, here. Uh, but after some initial hiccups, uh, we do see a hope of reducing the time of claim settlement uh, here because uh, the claims are entirely dependent on satellite data sets, which are fairly available quickly, not exactly real time, but near real time. Uh, moreover, the products that uh, uh, we are talk uh, uh, talking here, these are uh, practically free for the farmers. And that also, you know, brings in the topic of universalization. That also helps uh, in... in having such project rolled out at the statewide level so that your fixed expenses are also taken care of. Um, apart from this, I think we believe that Telangana government is also trying out a few things uh, in the uh, space of farm level insurance product. It would be an interesting space to uh, watch. I would say simply as an industry professional, uh, my task or our task here is uh, in the coming few years uh, would be to cater to the unserved uh, uh, market uh, and bring in more insights to strengthen the current operational framework, which is already quite flexible, I would say. So that eventually it be the PMABY itself becomes a universal scheme and we don't need really state specific schemes. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's that's uh, very, very nice of you to bring in the perspective, CHO. Because we are we are actually really missing AIC here, who did uh, uh, were an important player and and launched this pilot in West Bengal. So actually, we have a lot more to discuss, but I think uh, I think we didn't realize the time that we already spent about an hour and thirty minutes discussing. Uh, but I think uh, all good things have to come to close. So um, I think probably we we better close. Uh, that's what I've been told. Uh, the next five, maybe a ten minutes, we would like to spend on taking the the questions because uh, you know we had a huge participation of participants from across different countries as well. So there's some questions which have come, and there's some questions which have been shared with me. Probably I will I will I will probably uh, uh, read that uh, questions for you. Uh, probably maybe you you will be able to when whoever which of uh, you think comfortable, please do do so. Um, well, you know, there, there are some of the questions probably uh, already answered, so therefore I'm not actually. Uh, so uh, one question is on the land records, of course, which I've discussed basically it's, uh, you know, though land records are getting updated, uh, um, are the maps at plot level are getting updated? This one question is more, on the, on the land records this digitization side. So basically, I think the question basically says, you no, know, the lands are getting divided. There's a mutation happening, the ownership and all that. So, uh, so is it really happening on, on, the, on the digital side as well? So that when you actually link in with your uh, underwriting record, uh, that that can actually capture that. So that's one one question. Um, so the NDVI and crop yield estimation is a whole topic. Of course, I mean, uh, we will discuss that in 
，我要打的房，啊。So there is one question: Can the digitalized crop insurance system be combined with the commodity exchange platforms to bring in a system where where fluctuations in farm income can be can be insured with equal efficiency? Uh, that is my second question, uh, which probably if you can take. And that the third question basically is, you know, regarding uh, the BSBY investment model. So that, of course, uh, um, you already answered, you know, this crop health factor. So uh, you are since already explained. Probably uh, uh, we, we need not revisit again. So the, the two questions I primarily want to, you to kind of you know whoever you think is one is you know uh, related to the uh, the uh, land records division and actually the updation part. The second part is you know uh, syncing this with the commodity markets. You know, the NCIP portal again. You know you know uh, actually integration of the commodity markets. And, and through that, providing an income protection insurance to the farmers. So, I won't specify who should take, but you know, since it's a general question, come to the panel. Any of you can probably try. So, we um, <laughs> pick up the integration, uh, like you know, on the for the commodity markets. I think I think the land record will be such a wonderful data. Uh, asset that could really like you know uh, integrate many other players and we talked about insurance we also talked about banks uh, these banks can have one single portal through which they can understand that you know, which farmers have taken the loans uh, have not taken the loans so that those loans can be serviced across but it could also uh, provide an entry for uh, technology companies which are or startups which are working in the field of agriculture right uh, we talked about like you no know, uh, non loanee farmers uh, like you no know, how do we register them how do we convince them Right, so I think since these are digital portals, we can have APIs, and we can have we have these hundreds of startups which are having their own applications across different segments, and they can have a form, right? They can have a form for loan origination, and this form can directly, if there is a complete template uh, like you now captured, then this can directly integrate to the NCIP portal, and the the request can be raised there. So I think there there has to be innovative ways of uh, inflows as well as outflow of solutions on this NCIP portal. So I I, I really believe that you no. Know, uh, on commodities, uh, if we can integrate that, it could be a quite a advantage. Uh, uh, total solution for the farmers can then can can be there. Okay. So, uh, anyone from the insurance uh, uh, writing side would like to add anything more? To I think I think sir, uh, the 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 uh, main question to uh, that the farmer, if if a land is on the name of the father and the distribution is made to the uh, childrens. I think that that is a challenge where uh, people don't go to the uh, patwaris and the land record holders to get that uh, updated. Then, then that's a challenge for the uh, insurance companies to the banks, everybody. I think if the, that ownership will uh, have to be taken by the farmers, that they need to get that updated uh, as and when it has been changed. And if that is done, I think I think uh, the perfect data is received to everyone, everyone. Okay, I think, uh, I think so. uh, that that come uh, brings us to the uh, to the clo closure of this program. But before I actually close, I would like to give uh, opportunity to uh, Pushin Mahapatra ji. So if if he has uh, anything to you know, I mean, using his his wisdom, his long experience as a banker as well as uh, someone who's driving the strategy at the uh, SBI General, would you have any final thoughts on this? I see. Let's face that this is a very, very important scheme which brings protection to the farmers. And all of us together have to make it work. All the participants, be it the insurers, reinsurers, uh, the technology players, the state governments, the central governments, and the farmers themselves, and all the enrolling agencies and the support uh, agencies. We just cannot fail the country. So I think all of us have to work in tandem. During the course of implementation, there will be learnings, there will be changes, but that is what we have to factor in. And I think uh, as the scheme has been in operation for five years, some of the issues of pricing and all is also based on the data set that we take for 10 years and year, where there could be an anomaly in the initial years. For the last uh, four or five years since the program has been there, the data is quite rich. But the data before that could have issues. 
so my own feeling is that as we evolve given another couple of years the data will become richer and i think you will see much better outcomes going forward and all of us need to work together to make it succeed so thank you so much uh, uh, you rightly said we cannot effort to fail we cannot effort to fail the farmers so uh, on this note uh, uh, we would like to close this uh, and uh, before i hand over to the organizers i would like to express my gratitude and thanks to all the participants all the panelists for for actively contributing uh, and sharing your uh, valuable you know views and your experiences on this forum i'm sure those who have participated registered i'm sure they would have something to take uh, a ta- as a take away uh, after you know participating or after joining this webinar thank you so much hello and uh, good evening everyone my name is uh, jitesh shah and i'm the chief revenue officer at cropin technologies um, and i'm going to enable the closing now the the latest edition that we just did on the fintech uh, webinar series in association with hsbc and think i um was obviously focused on the digitalization of crop insurance um as we've all discussed crop insurance is an essential financial tool to preserve the production capacity of farmers and the development of uh, rural economy and like mr mahapatra said this is extremely critical and uh, you know we should not fail our farmers um because it provides the farmers with financial freedom to build capacity and adopt newer agriculture practices and more importantly it also helps protect the farmers financially from calamities such as natural disasters extreme weather we spoke about how it happened in maharashtra or even loss in revenue due to significant price fluctuations um also by the use of uh, crop insurance as we have discussed a farmer who struggles and works hard day in and day out will be assured that at least at the end of the day or the season he or she will get a return on their hard work in the case of a crisis so with the introduction of digital solutions in the field of crop insurance it will become easier for our farmers to claim insurance and hence their faith in being a continue to be a part of the agriculture ecosystem because one of the other issues that we are obviously struggling is rural communities moving to urban areas and they don't find agriculture um, you know uh, lucrative enough and then on the other side when you look at the financial institutions um, they have in the past had had not had many tools to assess risk now with the availability of uh, several digital technologies and solutions and with cropin of course being on the forefront a lot of real time data sets have been made available to the financial institutions and using this vast amount of uh, real time data financial institutions and insurance institutions can assess the risk more efficiently right so um, technology is helping take care of both what the farmers want as well as what the uh, organizations want um in the last couple of hours we heard um, uh, we heard from our thought leaders uh, they had a very nuanced and intricate discussion on why and how should we digitize crop insurance at a fundamental level how should we look at creating public private partnership access to land record some conversation around the policy framework um obviously there are inefficiencies and how do we remove it through digitization and technology um mo- very importantly stability and sustainability of all stakeholders right farmers uh, uh tech players the the insurance players um all of them um data enabled risk assessment which is ultimately most important and access to all of these real time data sets right? so all of these are going to be a critical part of india's vision for a very airtight crop insurance program and of course the intent is for us to make all of this um, so successful that we become a role model at a global level um so on that note i would like to thank the attendees for attending the session um so all the participants thank you so much for making it uh, to this very insightful session um also a big thank you to mr rajesh meena for uh, taking the time and being part of this webinar as the guest of honor uh, dr butani of course we missed having him so we'll try and see you know how we can get him on the next session um further thanks to the distinguished speakers and the entire panel who made who helped us make the session a reality despite the extremely busy schedule you all have and last but not the least you know the core team who has helped us plan and manage such an insightful session so i would really like to call out abhijit from thinkag and jyoti and dhruv from the cropin team for helping us get all of this together coordinating with you know such an esteemed panel and bringing in 400 to 500 participants globally uh, is no mean task so um, abhijit dhruv jyoti you all should take a bow 
Um, so with that, once again, thank you for uh, joining us and uh, definitely stay tuned to Propens social channels for future events. There's a lot that's coming up and we look forward to meeting um, all of you in the future events. Thank you.